Hi, welcome to session session eight. Now we are going to discuss uh, the liver. Liver is considered to be the largest uh, exocrine gland. Largest exocrine gland. Liver is considered to be. It is comes under the external in uh, digestive glands. External or extra elementary. digestive gland that is extra outside external since it is present outside the gut basically it is present on the right side below the diaphragm it is located liver is a hepato refers to the liver liver is the largest exocrine gland it is a present on the right side of the body below the diaphragm generally the liver is considered to be measuring as weight of the 1.2 to 1.5 kg basically it is varied from male to female individual it is heavier in the males than when compared with the females generally the liver is the largest exocrine gland digestive gland mainly made up of the two lobes it is a what are separated by means of a partition it is a separated into the partition right and a left lobes the right lobe is larger when compared with the left lobe the right lobe again consists of the caudate lobe it is furtherly includes the three lobes the three lobes include are caudate and uh, the it is a uh, name it to be the other two lobes are what uh, present in the right side whereas the left lobe is with only one generally the right lobe is larger caudate and uh, the proper other lobe the right is with the three for the lobes whereas the left lobe is one generally the lobe each of the lobe is consist of the structural and uh, the functional units which are named to be the lobules the lobe is furtherly divided into lobules the each lobe consist of the lobules which are the hepatic lobules which are considered to be the structural and functional units in general one lobule is separated from the other lobule by means of a loose connective tissue which is said to be the glissans capsule glissans capsule what we learn is the glissans capsule is a loose connective tissue sheath that separates the one lobule from the another lobule this is how in a liver the many lobules are what accommodated and are separated by means of the glissans capsule these the hepatic lobules are considered to be the structural and the functional units generally the hepatic lobule which contain the hepatic cells name it to be the hepatocytes these hepatocytes are arranged in a radial fashion look at this the diagram where you find uh, the radial row arrangement of the hepatocytes the radial row arrangement of the hepatocytes is uh, seen in each uh, hepatic lobule which is named to be the hepatic cords the radial row arrangement of the hepatocytes named it to be the hepatic cords these hepatocytes what secrete the bile juice basically it is an alkaline in condition and uh, generally it is about 7.8 it is an alkaline condition we vary we say it is an alkaline condition generally the hepatocytes 
that secretes the bile juice enter into bile canaliculi from there it enters into hepatic duct hepatic duct of right side and left side the hepatic duct of right and left are joined together what forms the common hepatic duct the diagrammatically we can see these are the hepatic duct hepatic duct right and left which are joined together form common hepatic duct common hepatic duct right hepatic duct left hepatic duct so liver is with the two lobes right and left furtherly each lobe is divided into lobules lobules contain ductules so the ductules into duct duct of right and left are what forms the common hepatic duct in the same way the lobes contain lobules so the right uh, lobe from which the ductules join together form right hepatic duct in the same way the left side left ductules join together form a left uh, hepatic duct right and the left hepatic duct what forms the common hepatic duct this common hepatic duct joins with the cystic duct now the question is what is cystic duct generally between the right and the left lobes of the liver we find a, a sac like structure a pouch green colored pouch like structure is present name it to be the gall bladder gall bladder is the storage of the bile bile juice is stored in the gall bladder the duct that originate from the gall bladder is named to be the cystic duct certain times as a disorder we see with the digestive glands disorders in the case of the salivary glands parotid salivary glands are inflamed inflammation and swelling of the parotid salivary glands is named to be the mumps it is a viral infection paramyxo virus is a virus that causes the mumps inflammation in the parotid salivary glands in the same manner the case with the liver is also is a what affected the disorder one of which is named to be the jaundice jaundice is a condition where the bile juice whose passage is blocked that is the hepatic duct and the gall bladder duct cystic duct blockage what fails in the secretion uh, fails in the flow of the bile into the intestine that is the duct common hepatic duct combined with the cystic duct and form common bile duct we say it is a cbd common bile duct this common bile duct is what join with the main pancreatic duct the combination of cbd combination of the cbd plus the pancreatic duct pancreatic duct what forms the ample of water or hepato pancreatic duct earlier we have seen duodenum is the part into which the hepato pancreatic duct open that is what here we see diagrammatically so the gall bladder cystic duct and uh, the common hepatic duct join together form a common bile duct this common bile duct runs forward and joins with the pancreatic duct pancreatic duct and forms the hepato pancreatic duct or ample of water 
here the points to remember this uh, hepato pancreatic duct or ample of water that opens into the duodenum by means of an opening this opening is guarded by means of sphincter of adi sphincter of adi it's a sphincter as we have seen in the case of the stomach uh, the cardiac sphincter and the what is called a pyloric sphincter and anal sphincter the same way here the sphincter sphincter of odi the opening of hepato pancreatic duct into the duodenum is guarded by sphincter of odi one more point to remember that uh, sphincter of boyden sphincter of boyden is uh, important to see boyden <coughs> that is this is uh, the duodenum for suppose this is the common bile duct which joins with uh, the what is called a uh, pancreatic duct is it right so the cbd which is about to join with the pancreatic duct so the cbd which is joining with the before uh, joining the pancreatic duct the cbd is a uh, water uh, guarded by sphincter of boyden so the sphincter of boyden is a uh, the sphincter of the common bile duct which is joining the pancreatic duct then the common pancreatic duct generally the sphincter prevents the backward flow so the backward flow of the bile goes back into the duct and thereby into the gall bladder or else into the hepatic duct into the liver is what prevented so the next is sphincter of odi the common bile duct that combines with the pancreatic duct and opens into the duodenum is what named to be the what is called sphincter of odi this is the details of uh, the liver liver is with the two lobes right and the left which is separated by means of a partition which is a ligament a partition what uh, separates the what is called a uh, right lobe and uh, the left lobe are separated then right lobe is uh, what with furtherly three lobes are present right lobe is the larger left lobe is the smaller liver is uh, present uh, on uh, the right side of the body below the diaphragm and uh, the each lobe furtherly consist of the lobules the lobules of uh, or in a what is called a hexagonal shape 1 2 3 4 5 6 these lobules are what considered to be the structural and functional units of the liver hepatic lobules one hepatic lobule separated from the another hepatic lobules by means of loose connective tissue sheath name it to be the glissens capsule which is the characteristic feature of mammalian liver and uh, inside each lobule basically the blood vessels uh, that are associated with the liver we say the one that is bringing the blood into the liver the one that is taking away from the blood so in this connection each lobule separated from another and is lined by glissens capsule which is a loose connective tissue sheath each lobule consists of basically the vein which is a centrally located vein hepatic vein central vein and uh, surrounding this uh, vein central vein there is a radial row arrangement of the hepatocytes which are uh, considered to be the hepa hepatic cords and uh, the hepatocytes which synthesize the bile juice which released into the canaliculi bile canaliculi that into the hepatic duct hepatic duct of right and left joined together forming the common hepatic duct 
and uh, they present a sac like structure gall bladder from which the duct originate is a cystic duct combination of the cystic duct with the common hepatic duct what forms the common bile duct common bile duct join with the pancreatic duct before joining the pa uh, pancreatic duct uh, it is with the sphincter of boyden then the common bile duct with the hepato pancreatic duct join together form the hepato pancreatic duct or ampulla of water whose opening into the duodenum is guarded by sphincter of odi generally the liver is also considered to be the regenerative organ Regener regenerative organ and uh, there present the portal triad portal triad in the sense uh, tri means three the combination of hepatic portal vein and the branch of bile duct and uh, also the what is called uh, hepatic artery the combination of hepatic portal vein hepatic artery and the branch of uh, the bile duct three together what name it to be the portal triad generally the liver that synthesizes the bile juice bile juice is alkaline in condition liver have uh, the two sources of the blood one from the gut that is whatever we eat uh, the food that is digested the digested food from the gut the digested food needs to be what is called a uh, transported to the parts where it is it needs to be stored so the digested food are what uh, before releasing into the general circulation of the blood they are brought into the liver that is by means of hepatic portal vein so liver have a sources in two forms one from the gut and from one uh, what is called uh, the hepatic artery which brings about the what is called uh, into the liver so it is having the two sources one from the hepatic artery and one from the hepatic portal vein <clears throat> next uh, the liver functions liver is considered to be the there are various functions performed by the liver metabolism detoxifying organ metabolism detoxifying organ erythropoiesis that is hemopoiesis hemopoiesis and erythroclastic erythro in the sense rbc production of the blood cells hemopoiesis heat generation production of uh, the proteins blood clotting uh, proteins osmoregulation excretion removal of the nitrogenous waste thereby it maintains the osmoregulation and storage synthesis of a certain vitamins these are all what the functions of the liver we'll discuss one after the another in this connection first of all the production of the bile bile is synthesized by liver hepatocytes the liver with the hepatocytes synthesize the bile juice bile juice is an alkaline enzymeless secretion bile juice is an enzymeless alkaline it is above the ph value 7 alkaline and is with the bile salts and the bile pigments bile juice is an alkaline and an enzymeless there are no enzymes so in the case of the digestive glands in the case of the digestive glands this is the only enzymeless secretion by juice which includes then what is present it is with the bile salts and the bile pigments bile salts are sodium potassium glycocholate and tarocholate what for 
द क्वेश्चन हियर यू हैव टू रेज इज इफ इट इज नॉट एंजाइम देन वॉट इज द अदर फंक्शन रिलेटेड विद द डाइजेशन जनरली the fats digestion require emulsification that is conversion of larger molecules of the fat into smaller molecule until and unless emulsification is done there is no digestion of uh, the fats so first the fats gets emulsified then it is digested by lipase fat digestion require two points to remember one alkaline condition the secretion of this bile juice and uh, the pancreatic juice make uh, the alkaline status to the food in the duodenum second point to remember we have discussed uh, in the intestinal region the enterogastron is a hormone released which inhibits the what is called secretion of the gastric juice so acidic condition is decreased and alkaline condition is increased this is the first point second point under alkaline condition the fat digestion first is an alkaline condition second is emulsification emulsification is conversion of the larger fats into smaller so emulsified uh, emulsification is done by means of bile salts that is none other than sodium potassium glycocolate and tarocolates then emulsified fats upon which the lipase act and convert them into triglycerides diglycerides monoglycerides and fatty acids this is what uh, the fat digestion so remember however it is an enzyme plus but uh, take part in the digestion its initiation however it is an enzymeless so that is what the role of the bile bile pigments bile pigments are bilirubin and biliverdin how they are produced we do discuss the liver is a erythroclastic organ however it is a hemopoietic basically production of the blood cells is hemopoiesis hemopoiesis is in the early embryonic stage the yolk sac mesoderm later embryonic stage it is the liver so in the embryonic stage liver is the hemopoietic but in the adult stage the worn out rbcs means the old rbcs are destroyed in the liver that's what they did through clostic when rbcs are destroyed how do the uh, where do the hemoglobin go the hemoglobin is broken down into bile rubin bile verdin pigments uh, that's what the bile contain bile salts and bile pigments bile rubin bile verdin which are unnecessary these are eliminated to the outside in this respect the liver is of excretory and not only the sudden cholesterol is also eliminated outside that is about the bile bile production production of the bile which is the function of the liver then metabolism metabolism involve the glycogenesis glycogenolysis gluconeogenesis and the lipogenesis glycogenesis in the sense genesis means synthesis conversion of glucose into glycogen with the help of the insulin glucose is converted into glycogen insulin we say is a hormone synthesized in the pancreas with the help of that's what we are saying with the help of insulin the glucose is converted into glycogen so it reduces the glucose level we do say diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is a increasing in the glucose level why as insulin deficiency glucose is not converted to glycogen which is a normal function of the liver with the help of the insulin of the pancreas that's what glycogenesis next to glycogenolysis lysis means breakdown glycogen breakdown into glucose that is glycogenolysis which will the help of uh, the glucagon so glucagon increases the glucose level by converting the glycogen into glucose 
whereas insulin convert the glucose into glycogen that is glycogenesis this is gluco glycogenolysis so this is how the balance of uh, the glucose levels takes place in our body that is the reason why insulin and glucagon is said to be the antagonistic hormones then gluconeogenesis synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrates non carbohydrates in the sense fats proteins from which non carbohydrates fats and the proteins are from which the glucose is synthesized or glycogen is synthesized they are the carbohydrates synthesis of uh, carbohydrates synthesis of the glucose from non carbohydrates is what name it to be the gluconeogenesis <clears throat> next lipogenesis synthesis of the lipids from proteins or amino acids is a lipogenesis these are the metabolism it is done it is a detoxifying organ we consider detoxification detoxification means removal of the toxic substances basically by various metabolic activities are the prussic acid acid prussic acid is synthesized by metabolism which is a if stored in the body it is a danger that's the reason why it is a detoxified detoxification is the function next uh, the liver is considered to be the first check post in our body just now we have seen what we have seen the food that we take the water that we take enter into the gut then through hepatic portal vein which hepatic portal vein is a vein which start with the blood capillaries in the gut and uh, ends with the blood capillaries in the liver so liver is with the tri portal triad which is with the hepatic portal vein hepatic artery and the branch of bile duct the nutrients the food that we take the water we take from the gut is brought into the liver before releasing into the general cir circulation into the blood it enters into the liver so this is how it checks it checks that if the, any microbes are there they are destroyed fungi substances this is the reason why who take uh, the adulterated food particularly the alcohol also excessive intake of the alcohol may damage the liver leading to liver cirrhosis however it is a detoxifying as more and more it exposed to the toxic substances naturally its functional efficiency decreases that's what it leads to the liver cirrhosis that's what it is a first check post whatever we take the food and water from the gut reaches into the liver that's what it is a first check post then it is a hemopoietic production of the blood cells erythroclastic the worn out rbc's blood cells are destroyed and the production of the what is called uh, blood clotting proteins blood clotting proteins prothrombin and fibrinogen are synthesized by liver they are inactive and they are what furtherly in the blood coagulation process they are what uh, become active so they also play role in blood coagulation by synthesizing prothrombin and fibrinogen next up uh, phagocytosis generally the case with the, the liver which have the kaffir cells kaffir cells are nothing but the phagocytic cells generally the liver which consists of the phagocytes name it to be the kaffir cells which kills the bacteria in fact they are what are considered to be the they are monocytes itself okay that enter into the connective tissues of the liver and become uh, the kaffir cells they are phagocytes so kills the bacteria so this is how it is a protective in function next uh, the um, apart from that the osmoregulation generally what we see is in maintaining of the body fluids and salts okay osmoregulation is the process of maintenance of the body fluids and the salts in the body for which uh, in the kidneys for osmoregulation function angiotensin is what synthesized in the liver 
which is in the process convert into angiotensin 1 then angiotensin 2 which stimulate uh, the secretion of the aldosterone which play a role in the absorption of the salts and uh, also additionally by water so osmoregulation is done these are all the functions of the liver which includes detoxification next metabolism which involve the glycogenesis gluconeogenesis glycogenolysis lipogenesis production of the heat is an additional point to be seen that is as uh, the heat generation is done like that of uh, the other uh, uh, organs the synthesis of the heat erythropoiesis production of the blood cells in the same manner erythroclastic next uh, the protection by kaffir cells osmoregulation and uh, apart from that it is also producing the blood clotting proteins and uh, we do also see it is a regenerative organ that is it is having the highest regenerative capacity next apart from that uh, the synthesis of the bile bile in turn in uh, the emulsification of the fats and the bile pigment, uh, pigments which are removed so excretion its a function these are all what the functions we see in the case of the <coughs> labor besides the bile which is uh, eliminated outside some amount of the cholesterol and other excessive salts are also eliminated